Hi, I'm Matt Reynolds, editor of Packaging World Magazine, back from Dusseldorf, Germany at Interpack. So after a couple of days of con concentrating on mostly uh, automation, controls, and big, big pieces of equipment, entire packaging lines, I shifted my gears to the materials side of things. And when you're talking about materials, oftentimes you're talking about sustainability. Uh, so one trend we've been following in the United States uh, right, is that rightly and wrongly, uh, for multi-packing, a lot of brands have been shifting, when they're able to do so, shifting from plastic shrink wraps and, and plastic multi-packs to carton board or to paperboard or oftentimes for even the can carriers on six packs or 12 packs of bottles or PET bottles or, or cans of beverage, uh, they've been moving to uh, container board. Um, so we, were, we saw quite a bit of that on the floor today by the usual suspects. We saw uh, KHS, Crohn's, and Westrock. So let's give them a look. KHS is here at Interpack presenting what it describes as a resource conserving system to promote the circular economy. KHS's InnoPack Kisters Nature Multipack Machine, which the company says saves up to 90% of materials, is on display with new features like a new universal adhesive. This adhesive is applicable to practically all outer coatings on both aluminum and tin or steel cans. This one-fits-all system makes it easier for beverage producers to convert to this machine technology since previously choosing the right adhesive could be a laborious process. The company also says the Nature Multipack system is one of the most sustainable types of secondary packaging on the market as it clusters cans or PET bottles together to form stable packs with just a few dots of adhesive without any additional outer packaging. One other noteworthy offering, KHS says it's able to help brands and CPGs on their packaging material and multipacking decision making processes thanks to new independent calculator tools that assess the carbon footprints of various packaging styles in direct comparison. Just down the aisle in Hall 13, Crohn's is demonstrating a similar set of offerings for the beverage market. Meanwhile, in Hall 8, Westrock is taking square aim at the paperboard produce packaging market, which is booming, especially in France due to recent legislation. Let's hear directly from both of them, Crohn's and Westrock. Okay, I'm Stefan with, with the Crohn's AG. Um, we are a main supplier for the beverage industry, filling, capping, processing. Um, I'm specifically based in the packaging department down in southern uh, Bavaria and we brought here an alternative uh, for shrink, conventional shrink film. So presenting the light pack top family either for cans, for PET and or for glass containers. Uh, at the drink tech we already presented um, the light pack top family uh, for cans, so a flat standard top clip. Then the second version is uh, with the promo skirt for advertisement barcode hiding and or the third uh, variant is with the lid protection. So for the Interpack this year, we introduce uh, the PET version into the market, right? There's the first machine sold to a European customer. Um, this comes with a flat top clip and a paper-based strap. Main approach here at first is to save CO2 content in comparison to plastics, right? Um, second approach is then to use as less, minima, as less material as possible, right? And the third approach was to respect the installed machine base. So develop not a huge new machine, just use existing proven functions and develop them further so that we can replace step by step plastics by a paper-based packaging. Hi, my name is Paul Chappell. I'm sales manager for the automation division of Westrock. I'm here to Interpack 2023, and we're delighted to show you our flex form and harvest range of products. So here we have our harvest plastic replacement range. What we're using here is instead of the plastic punnet for tomatoes, strawberries, all of your fresh produce, we're using a fully fiber-based solution. Um, we supply the material as well as the automation to make sure that we have an absolutely perfectly optimized solution for you. And our aim really is to remove plastics from the market. Now we understand sometimes that the lid itself may need to be plastic, but in that case we can always use a monomer or a biodegradable, fully recyclable kind of film. So the idea is totally separable into the waste stream. Um, so we have many different designs. One of our big advantages here is the fact that the products are also we aim for backwards compatibility with the, with the uh, plastic equivalents so the customer has minimal changes on their machinery. We're trying to avoid high, um, large changeover times, expensive tooling, etc. So that's really our big place. And the fact that we can do the material 
and a machine together means that we can do all kinds of uh, various options to supply to customers. Okay, hi, this is our Flexform range of machinery and we're running our Evergrow carton-based punnet solution here today. So this is a double head version, so we have two cavities. Vertical magazine, waist level, very easy access, very, very high accuracy and fast changeover. And we're running with a flange today. So this is a fully flanged, top sealable punnet. And we have the optional stacker on the outfeed as well. So we can run an individual uh, carton out of the machine or we can run full stacks out. And then what happens there is that the customer takes it to their top sealing machine. And because of the work we've done on the carton design, you get a very, very stable, uh, repeatable punnet, which goes with incredible accuracy and efficiency through the top ceiling as well with minimal changes. At the Sunoco booth, I saw an application from European breakfast foods provider One Day More. Sunoco has been providing metal end containers to One Day More since 2016, but even though the packaging met performance goals, consumer recycling didn't meet the mark. In 2020, the Confederation of European Paper Industries reported a 74% re paper recycling rate. That's close to the practical maximum recycling rate of 78%. This shows paper is much more likely to wind up in recycling bins. Appealing to consumer perception, Sunoco delivered a new paper bottom, Envirocan, despite fluctuating production plans. The new packaging product, made from 100% recycled fibers, is now in 13 European markets served by one day more. Dow magnanimously used much of its booth space at Interpac to showcase winners of its popular Dow Packaging Innovation Awards. One award winner that really caught my eye was from Procter & Gamble. The new P&G EcoClick box is a patent-pending paperboard package made with FSC-certified materials and a minimum of 70% recycled fibers. The pack's fully recyclable and curbside paper collection streams. Its dimension and design allow for 50% more packs per pallet and reduces the number of trucks within P&G facilities. Most importantly, it's a certified child-safe system, keeping kids away from laundry pods that admittedly do look a little bit appetizing. P&G says this is the first packaging solution for its laundry capsule products that really clicks all the boxes. Get it? Now, not to be outdone, Unilever's Persil had a similar launch, this time using board from Graphic Packaging International. Let's hear from Rolf at GPI about the project. Good afternoon on this beautiful Saturday during Interpac. I got the honor to introduce you to one of our plastic replacement projects, or not only projects, to our successful market entries. This is a detergent pack where the customer came to us a couple of, a couple of years ago, it is right now, with the task to replace a rigid plastic container, which of course you can do with cardboard. But um, he initially said, well, we replace it, but we need functionality like a barrier onto it. Okay, we need to stack it very high. Okay, and we need to have a child safe. Of course, we don't want little toddlers or little kids to take these beautiful things in their hand or even worse in their mouth and swallow it. So it needs to be very safe. And not only for first opening, you need to open it a couple of times, and not only a couple of times, up to 50 times. So, with all these requirements, with all these challenges, we actually started developing, and we came up with a beautiful little concept which consists out of two cardboard um, components, a lid and a tray, and inside you see the capsules. And what looked like a magic trick, you know, was well rehearsed because I'm an adult, so I can open this pack, which little toddlers can and shouldn't. And I can open it once by pressing here, I can open it twice and again and again. So. If you look at it, it looks quite simple, but um, the devil is in the detail, as we say in Europe, and here the devil, he killed it by using quite unique folding processes on the tray and on the hood. So with this, we are compensating tolerances in the filling process and making sure this clicks on every time. Talking about compression strengths, what you see, we have two materials that add to each other and making it very stable when you stack these things. Barriers, we don't have any plastic films in there. There's no plastic. We just added a coating on the inside, which helps us to prevent any leakage if one of these little things is, is being pushed too hard. So there's no um, washing liquid coming out of the box. And additionally, with a special coating that we applied in our printing press, we give it a moisture barrier 
So it stays nice and neat and does the job it needs to do. It runs on automatic lines at high speed at the customer. These lines are coming from a, from a third party. We've done the, the uh, factory acceptance test, very successful. They run very smooth, very good. And when hitting the market, consumer feedback was fantastic. So the French and the, the English consumers are happy. New European markets coming soon. And of course, we are looking overseas to get this into market over the, there as well. Another area where we're seeing fiber-based packaging encroaching on what was traditionally uh, the realm of plastic packaging is in films or flexible packaging. Uh, here are a few more examples that we saw on the floor today. At the Toppen booth from their recent acquisition Interflex Group in the UK, we saw a range of fiber-based films and flexible materials with paper barrier. We didn't get a whole lot of details here. Uh, I was running from one booth to the next, but I do know that there are both heat seal and cold seal options, as well as veg vegetable wax paper options. Here we see a paper flow wrapped cookie tray application. And finally, at the Kohler paper booth over in Hall 8, I saw a pair of paper film applications. First is a paper barrier application for the chocolate brand New Cow. Kohler says its flexible packaging paper Next Plus Advanced has an excellent oxygen, mineral oil, and grease barrier, which is necessary for applications where there's direct contact with chocolate and nuts. I again asked about the barrier, but for many of these paper film suppliers, that's the secret sauce. That's company IP. The best I managed by way of an explanation was that the barrier was likely mineral-based. The company also revealed a non-food sector collaboration with Schneider Electric. Using the Kohler Next Plus Seal Pure materials and grammages of 35, 40, 45, 65, or 80 grams per square meter, this is an extremely tear-resistant sturdy pack. It also is heat sealable and its strength properties make it well suited for further processing on most commercially available packaging machines. In fact, both Nukao and Schneider uh, use these paper films that, to run on their existing packaging equipment with only minor equipment adjustments like sealing temperatures and sealing times. Now as you can see, I'm on a metal-based high platform and a storm is rolling in, so I'm going to go find safety. We'll talk to you next time.